All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kemp. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is Sunday Site Visit 51. And today, I will take you along with me during the recent Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour, where we had private, special permission access into all three chambers of the Great Pyramid of Giza at night as we journey down into the subterranean pump chamber. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget, click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Check out the members-only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, Please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for the intro, so without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And in this week's Sunday site visit, we had private access into all three chambers of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And we started by exploring the subterranean pump chamber, which you can see here. An underground chamber excavated from the core bedrock of the structure that functioned as a pump mechanism to push water up the well shaft into the upper two reaction chambers of the structure during the manufacturing sequence that produced a solution of sulfuric acid. And here, you can see a diagram showing the configuration of the chamber with the descending northern pump shaft here, the well shaft here, the compression chamber here, a pit leading down into the bedrock here, and a dead end shaft that terminates into the bedrock leading out to the south here. And in today's footage, you will see conclusive evidence proving that the southern shaft is a complete dead end. It does not go anywhere, which completely falsifies a well-known theory about the subterranean chamber that it was a ram pump or a water hammer to pump water out of the Great Pyramid. As you can see here, which proposes that water was pumped out in this direction through the southern shaft. This is 100% impossible, and I now have video evidence proving beyond a doubt that this southern shaft is a complete dead end into the bedrock. There is absolutely no way that the water could be pumped out of the structure in this direction. Now, one area where I do agree with this hypothesis is that the primary source of the water is from the filled external reservoir, which you can see depicted here. But after the water enters the subterranean pump, the only place that it can go is up into the reaction chamber system, as I will show you right now. So to begin, let's start with an animation by a German engineering team that I found when I was preparing way back for episode 24 that shows a similar idea to the one-way valves within the Great Pyramid that I proposed in my book. This is one of the only similarities between the German team and my hypothesis about this chamber pump system. But it demonstrates the concept of a one-way valve coming from below the structure here in this pit. Unfortunately, I completely disagree with the rest of their theory for more reasons than I will take time to explain here, but I'll put a link to the original video in the description below if you want to watch it for yourself.
All right, now that you can visualize the concept of the one-way valve system, let's start with a diagram of the Great Pyramid here. The external reservoir is filled with water, which then fills the pump shaft. The compression chamber and the well shaft equal to a level of the height of the water in the external reservoir. In this stage, the compression chamber one-way valve is closed and the well shaft grotto one-way valve is open. And this southern shaft is a complete dead end. The water only has one place to go, up. Now, the pump mechanism is activated, driving the water down the pump shaft. The pressure within the dead end compression chamber forces the water back up in this direction, pushing it up into the well shaft, which begins filling the upper reaction chamber system. And as I was discussing with my tour group, how the conventional names for these components contain vital information about their functions. For example, the quote unquote offering chapels on the Eastern temples being used to quote unquote offer or introduce reactants or water into the chamber systems. And here within the Great Pyramid, we have the exact same thing with this quote unquote well shaft. So what is a well? It is a water supply. And that is exactly the function of this component to supply water into the upper reaction chambers. The pump mechanism can then be reactivated until enough water has been pumped into the system that it has been filled to maximum capacity. As you can see here, when the pumping stops pushing water up through the well shaft, the water pressure from above will close this one-way valve, thus maintaining the water level in the reaction chamber system. The chemical reaction sequence is then activated, and I am condensing for brevity purposes the explanation of this reaction sequence as I have explained it in numerous previous episodes, which includes draining the water as explained in episode 80. The reaction proceeds to produce the product solution of sulfuric acid, which is then removed through the structure through the extraction shaft located below the queen's chamber. The pump can then be pulled back up the northern shaft, much like a plunger in a syringe, which would then open the one-way valve here and allow water to be pulled back into the northern pump shaft filling the pump system back up. And then it can be run continuously via the exact same procedure, all while leaving the water within the external reservoir, which is critical and will be explained in a later episode. So now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, join me on our private special permission access into all three chambers of the Great Pyramid of Giza, beginning with this subterranean pump chamber. Let's go. And just a quick announcement, new Land of Chem merch is now available. I just dropped the Nano Gold fifth degree logo on a black t-shirt and hoodie. And I'm very excited to present the new spectacular white horse logo on a black hoodie and the premium high definition, extra large white horse logo on this exceptional quality black t-shirt. And once again, thank you so much to friend and supporter of the channel, Adam Arrington from New Zealand for collaborating with me on this new logo design. He has done some amazing work in helping me bring my ideas for the Land of Chem logos to life. And if you wanna check out more of his work, I'll put a link to his Instagram in the video description below. The Egyptian blue version of the Land of Chem book and the last 30 or so of the signed first edition purple orchid paper print are still available. So if you want to show some love, just check out thelandofchem.com. And thank you all so much for the support.
All right, everyone, welcome back. And tonight, I have something extremely rare on the agenda. We are here at the spectacular Mina House Hotel, awaiting our private special permission access into all three chambers of the Great Pyramid of Giza at night. This is going to be a life-changing adventure for the guests here on our tour. There you can see it. And now I'm going to bring you along on this adventure with us. Yalla Bina. <laughs> I feel like this is Halloween or something. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's go. Private entry into all three chambers of the Great Pyramid of Giza at night. Subterranean chamber, Queen's chamber, and the King's chamber. It's going to be awesome. as we were walking up here you won't be able to see it on camera but the three belt stars of Orion are watching us from above absolutely perfect timing So we're going to be entering the subterranean chamber through the original opening into that lower chamber system, which if you look up to the left, as we go down in through this passageway, you can see the original opening, which is on the outside of the structure. And we'll take a look at this tomorrow morning because it'll be a lot easier to see in the daylight where the original opening into this descending shaft system originally starts. We are going to descend down into the bedrock, the primordial mound upon which the Great Pyramid was constructed. So remember when we were in Dashur, we were talking about how all of these structures were built on a mound of bedrock that acted as the foundation for the structure. And in most cases, part of the chamber system was excavated into the bedrock. So if you look to the left, you'll see that it's masonry. And as we go down into the shaft, it will be a bedrock excavated shaft. As with the subterranean chamber, this entire chamber was excavated from the bedrock. There is no limestone masonry blocks. It's been carved completely from the stone of the Giza Plateau itself. And there are some very anomalous details that I'll point out as we head down the descending shaft into the lower chamber. So as you can see here, there are three granite plug blocks here at the bottom of this shaft, which leads up into the grand gallery. You can stop going. Okay. So now if you guys follow me, watch your head. If you want to put your gloves on, now would be a good time to do that because we do have to crawl through a small area to get into the subterranean chamber. All right, everybody in the shaft? No. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So just imagine what this was like for the early archaeologists exploring the Great Pyramid who didn't have the luxury of the light system or the flashlights. So descending down into this chamber, as you can see, looking forward, 
I'm pretty sure they don't have the lights on down there. <laughs> so we're gonna get to see the subterranean chamber in the dark. Okay, so now everybody stop for a sec. Yep. And you can see that we are in the bedrock. And if you look around, there are no limestone blocks. This whole passageway was carved down into the foundation of the Giza Plateau itself. Crazy. <laughs> Okay, so anomalous area number one. So as you cross through this area here, take a look on your right, up into this cavity, and you can see a huge vein of iron oxide that runs through the bedrock here in the subterranean chamber. And this is the first vein of iron oxide that we'll see. I have never heard this reported or shown by anyone else coming down into the subterranean chamber. And this is extremely important. As we talked about before, the dielectric capacity of iron oxide is double that of limestone. Limestone has a dielectric constant of six or seven. Iron oxide has a dielectric constant of 14. So just make sure to take a look at that area as you cross through there so you don't miss that. Next thing, here on the right, this is the termination of what is known as the well shaft. And this well shaft goes all the way up through the bedrock and connects into the grand gallery. Oh wow. And we'll see the area where this connects into the Grand Gallery in just a moment. Ouch. <laughs> and one very interesting note about the well shaft is that the lower portion of the well shaft was actually cased in white calcite. That same crystal material that we saw at the Pyramid of Wanis. All right, so now, this is the portion where you need to crawl. So you will see pieces of glass here in the sand. So I highly recommend putting your gloves on and just be very careful when you're going through this area. It's a very short passageway. Let me put my gloves on real quick. And if you have your headlamps, this is another good place to use them. Mm -hmm. So this is awesome that we get to go in here in the dark. <laughs> okay, Yalavina. Whoa. Wait till you hear the acoustic properties <laughs> as you crawl through here. <laughs> I wanted to check for here on your right as you're passing through this area here you see another huge vein of iron oxide running through the bedrock here 
and I'm looking for that piece of calcite crystal that was we found a piece of calcite crystal down in here last time no no so it's like a piece of uh, and it may have since been reburied or moved but this piece of granite here is not from this chamber I'll explain that here in just a sec okay Last time I was in here, I didn't notice the acoustic properties as much, but it's booming in here. Yeah. Ooh, wait, this is this is it. This, yep, is this, is right. this is the subterranean chamber. Yeah. Correct. Let's take a look. This is correct. It smells a little funky down here. I wouldn't necessarily say that's about only like the red here. But this is very unusual that they have this open over here. I guess our journey isn't over. Well, this is a dead end. What about that? Is that a shining in this hole? Huh? So we can go back there. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me talk a little bit. I'll go back. Okay. So a couple of things to discuss about the subterranean chamber. And I'll let you guys get acclimated for a minute. This is a wild, wild chamber. And what appears to be a rough cut area here may have actually been producing some very interesting fluid dynamics I saw it in the lower portion of this chamber. Mm. So you'll see a very unusual nodule type thing here. Yeah. It almost looks like a seat. Yeah. And we can walk up here. You guys can all check this out. So that's one proposition about what you see here. But you can also see what looks to be a channel mm -hmm. kind of flowing down in this direction, which looks very intentional. Right, going down into the pit. Right. Pretty well aligned. And these are just very unusual looking housings and the remnants of bedrock. For a civilization that we know was very organized about the way they built things. This it appears to be very haphazard. You know, it wasn't an or organized removal of stone from this area. It's either very intentional. And John Cadman has done some research. Again, I, I disagree slightly with his idea that this was a ramp pump. The replica, and he made it a working model. Yeah. But. And he injected like coloring so you can see. Yes, yes, correct. John Cadman, yeah. Do you know John Cadman? And he knows that there are some very interesting fluid dynamic patterns that happen. 
happen when water is introduced into this chamber created by this bedrock formation? Well, uh, that's most likely iron oxide. That. So the only thing about that little area, and yes, we can go down in there. Just make sure if you got pants on, you got pants. Yep. You'll just have to go out backwards. I don't think there's enough room to really turn around down in here. Okay, so you'll notice here in this pit, especially coming from this area, you can kind of see. So here, here, mm -hmm. here, and here, it looks like there's evidence of flow erosion coming from down here into this area, coming from down here into this area, here, and here. And this bottom is a right? Yes. So you can see down there that there is wet mud inside of that shaft and it's never been fully excavated. This is actually, you can see how it looks like the water level must have dropped recently because this was wetter looking the last time we were in here. But you can see how caked up all that mud is. It's still wet and that thing has never been fully excavated. Now this piece of granite here is another piece that does not belong in the subterranean chamber. This piece of granite is from the antechamber. In, in this pyramid? Yes, this piece of granite here. And the piece of granite that we saw on the way in here from the right hand side. Correct. So it looks like this subterranean chamber and this shaft in particular may have had a dual function for the pump mechanism, which drove water through the well shaft into the upper chamber but then you could also drain water out of here when needed. And that's what I think is causing this fluid dynamic erosion pattern leading down into this. This is where the water went out of the structure, not through that dead end shaft over there. So that's really the only reason that I disagree with Kavanaugh. He, he's a very prolific researcher and his ideas on the fluid dynamics and the compression wave but it's not a, a water hammer per se. There's not a rocking back and forth motion that drives the water out that way. It was being pumped up into the upper chambers. And if you guys are feeling up to it, I mean, we can crawl down that little shaft. Who's up for it? Uh, okay. But we'll just have to go out backwards because I get out of here. It's just a dead end. Can I? Yeah, it is just a dead end. But remember, this may be your only chance. Yeah. I think it got inside here. Uh, I'm going to take my phone with me, so you can like, or should I? So I'll go with you. Yeah. I'm not going to let you go by yourself. I don't want to. Can you try to do this? And I'll go first. So that if anything happens, it happens yeah, to me first. Sure. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. But you can't, uh, huh? Yeah. It's not that far. No. No, it's not that far. But I would like to be able to say conclusively that it is a dead end. Right? You hear just speculatively about these things. Yeah, so there are two holes that are drilled into that piece of red granite. Now, the conventional explanation is that those two holes are involved in the pulley mechanism that raised these granite pieces inside of the antechamber, that there was a wood, a couple of wood rollers and they had ropes that went through those two holes that were used to raise and lower these pieces of stone within the antechamber. I disagree with that because I don't think that those pieces of red granite were intended to move. I think there was a component that was housed in those things, not rope. All right. And you can see somebody's little piss jump here. <laughs> yep. All right. So we just got to repair to go coordinated backward. Everybody good with that?
bunch of salt down in here. Yeah. Loads of it. Yeah, lots of it. But yes, that is as dead end as it gets. That's it? That's it. Yeah. That's not very far. No, it's not very far. So the idea that this was a ram pump and that water was being pumped out of the structure through this area. Well, we just disproved that, right? Yeah. Because this doesn't go anywhere. That's bedrock. So if water was in this chamber, it only had one way to go, mm -hmm. which is up through the well shaft into the rest of the structure. And I think we can all kind of pivot. If you want to come further, hey, Lex, see if you can turn around. I don't think I can. So I then could. just go backwards. If you can't turn around. Here, babe. Take the camera. You, get the, you can get the termination. Just turn around now. So the ladies and gentlemen at home can see this for yourself. That we're not just saying that. This is the end, the dead end of the shaft. What's, what's this fissure, Jeffrey? What do you think? Hold on, let me turn around and I can see it. Right. Oh my God, there's plenty of salt around this. Ton of salt on the oh ceiling. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Oh, yeah, there looks like there is enough space to turn around up there. Well, so not much here. No, I can barely turn around. So just go backwards. Okay. What do you, like there's this uh, really prominent fissure right here. All right, let me take a look. Can we go? Yeah, I was just trying to point this out. Okay. So like right here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it may yeah, be a like natural it. fissure in the bedrock. I see one here as well. It looks like there's some iron oxide in here. Yeah. Check this one out. Uh -huh. Check this. Yeah, so that does look like just a natural fissure. And I do see some iron oxide in here. Yeah. Uh -huh. So very similar to what we saw on the way down in the shaft, yeah. just a very a much smaller vein. Sent to go explore this thing with no flashlight. Go, babe. Okay. 
Okay, so we know the water wasn't going out through where we just were. So the water could only go down or up. So let's say instead of the pump block coming down the descending shaft, what if it went the opposite way and it was like the back of a syringe yeah. that pulled water up through this from a subterranean aquifer pulled water into the system, and then all you need is a two-way valve valve. So when you're pulling in this way, the valve opens in this direction, allowing water into the chamber, and then when the block moves in the other direction, the valve is pushed down, and the water is pushed up into the upper chambers. Yeah. And then what would be the purpose of that? Just for overflow or something? So I believe that this, and I agree with Cadman, that there is compression fluid compression in this shaft that assists in pushing water back out in this direction. Because he showed in his experiments that the fluid pushes back out into this direction as well. So whenever you guys are ready, we'll head back up the shaft, and then we'll go next to the queen's chamber. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was Sunday Site Visit 51, private special permission access into the Great Pyramid of Giza at night featuring the subterranean pump chamber. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in the next episode of the series, I will be investigating the mysterious crystal temple that we recently discovered on the Giza Plateau. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. And don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section and thelandofchem.com. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, links in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for today's video, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.